Thank you so much. So first of all, I'm really excited because I think it's about the entire day has gone by. And to see a room full of audiences who now by the time has a lot of insights on DOH already. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to come and talk about furthermore, which is PDOH. But to start with that, I would want to touch base on the fact that as we all know, pandemic had really hit us very hard, advertisers, right? And we knew as soon as that got over, the first thing that got picked by clients was out of home. Because everybody was stepping out of houses now and digital of course has taken it. And I think that also gave a boom to OOH because clients were keen to understand what more can be done. So as we know, out of home had always been a very powerful medium to drive any kind of interaction or engagement or even an impact. But the curious question here is that how do we, uh, you know, kind of segregate DOH and I'm sure since morning you have been hearing about it. We know that it's better for planning purposes, activation can be done in a great manner. Uh, it's very agile, execution is very much exceptional in terms of audience-based targeting. You can go ahead with dynamic creatives and we, we have already seen India doing that a lot by now. And lastly, your results are you know, directly linked to business impact. But again, the question is that are we already at the evolution and is that enough? So the world here is now, which is yes, evolution of DOH is now PDOH. And while I have some very crisp 10 to 15 slides with me, but I expect this to be a very open conversation. And if you have any questions, I'd be very uh, happy to take that. And I'm a person who talks in a very layman language, which I'll do even today. So you can while keep on reading the slides, but I'll talk very layman, yeah? So when I talk about, see, I'm a person of programmatic. So when we talk about DOH, I always hear this from clients that uh, DOH, where you're now going is programmatic DOH. How is that different? A. B, they say, is that an extension of out of home? Why do I put money on programmatic if I have to pay certain fees? Because then, you know, if you're talking about programmatic, DSP, SSP, technology comes into role play. So clients are not very keen for that because, of course, that's an additional cost to it. So I want to really focus on the fact that when entire world is ta talking about audience-based targeting, that's only for the fact because you want to avoid your leakage, your impressions. But if we take ourselves back 10, you know, 10 years ago, which is how maybe TV or even newspaper used to be seen, right? That why do I do digital ads? Why do I do YouTube? Why do I do OTT? Or for that matter, online news when I already have something in an impactful manner. But if you are showing your ads to everybody and anybody without targeting, you may call it a cheaper manner that it's a fixed cost for you, but that's also an overexposed expression and maybe a wastage for you, which you don't want to do. So if you can buy something, basis your audiences, that's a direct saving to you in a long term, definitely. And today when we talk about our market, uh, as you know, and there's no more a market which is not evolving. And I'm really happy to share that across the globe, India is the second largest and leading market when it comes to programmatic. So when we talk about that kind of scale, where, and it's true, it's no other market, it's India, where most of the innovations are seen, where clients are moving towards programmatic at such a, such a speed, 40% of digital spends are moving programmatic. So that's the speed at which we are running across. You have seen post-pandemic, connected TV has gone that way, which is where DOH is also going now. So the evolution of DOH is programmatic DOH. And please don't go by any kind of uh, words here, right? They may be very complex to understand, but uh, the ecosystem is very easy. And I'll, I'm, that's what I'm here for, right? So four clear terms that you see on the, on the, on the screens are use audience-based planning, which is not a tool in a specific manner, but anything and everything that can help you buy your impressions, your visibility, basis the cohorts that you want to go for. So for an example, if your clients are doing a campaign, no client does a campaign which is only TV specific or only out of home specific or only digital specific. They cut their budgets, but definitely their dream is to uh, go for a reach and to buy all of it in a very cumulative manner, which is only possible when the source of activating campaign is one, which is where programmatic plays a role for you. So if I'm a marketeer where I'm running my campaign and I have a budget to, you know, go for that, and as we all have seen it, even, you know, for out-of-home clients, they're always talking about ROI. And no matter how much we hate it, but even for all branding campaigns, impactful campaigns, uh, performance as a word is now getting tagged along. So when you talk about performance, clients are really asking you that, okay, I'm spending my money, it's my advertising budget, but what am I getting in return? So to get in return, what you really want is a return on investment. So out of home, the future, why am I saying programmatic out of home? 
it does not even help you only on measurement accountability because you can do that on digital out of home also but the thing is when you talk about efficiency how do you how do you build on that for every campaign eventually the agenda is reached and they want to lower it down so just imagine in a world where you can buy all your digital campaigns which is say youtube your display e-commerce etc and club that together with your digital out of home and bring on efficiency so if a person has been exposed in ad certainly on some certain screens on doh when you retarget them on a mobile to take them on a offline store which is where you can build on efficiency and prove that your channel is channel is working so moving to next this is again uh, one of a capability which you can find so when i say audience based planning capability i did not mean a cohort in terms of you know interest based targeting or a keyword based targeting but a usp which certainly doh carries which maybe not other channel carries which is a location based targeting and as you know a lot many changes are happening in india especially around the privacy laws being formulated which are going to impact the digital landscape in a very big way the way the europe market uh, the only solution that your digital clients are talking about is what do you do in a cookie less world i'm sure you must have heard these jargons now you guys are the solution because when you talk about a cookie less world from where else will you pick up the signals which is location based signals which is where doh sits so in no time you can actually expect doh to become mainstream and a main channel of selection for clients now for that when you're planning you're clearly saying that your audience based approach is not bases the audience interest or their behavior or their browsing but their physical locations which what do you mean by that is a uh, location targeting second is understanding your behaviors as well in terms of your patterns the way you locate around a certain city are you going to banks you go to food courts you go to certain shopping areas that tells a lot about a user it tells about a user in which areas are they doing a job bases your everyday location pin which is pinging right temporal targeting understanding the kind of weathers etc so for an example if it's raining outside would you want to change your ac ad concept separately for delhi separately for bombay different brands can sell it which is where doh plays a bigger role and you don't have to manually plan that campaign can be done in fraction of seconds using the platform custom audiences first party data is playing a bigger role any article that you read about today clients are just talking about you know building first party data identity resolution solutions so which is where uh, if as a channel out of form doh cannot club yourself with those capabilities it becomes a very siloed approach but when you talk about taking doh to a programmatic capability you can club that within a custom audience co custom audience cohort so it really advances your strategy with hardly any effort it's just that what you have to do is instead of a digital out of home campaign you need to understand that why do you need a dsp and a ssp as a mandate to expand the horizon so that's not a added technology on top but i'll say a key to unlock that door for you moving to next so that's clearly the prog uh, the power of programmatic doh which i call as pdoh um see these four things which you call about these are the keywords where you can just say that the usp of a pdoh could be flexible automated buying yes clearly of course it's a real time bidding that way it can be done what i really found find very interesting in this is premium inventory at scale right now i think bigger problem for oh industry is a lot of publishers in the market and for a an advertiser to understand where do i put money how and why which publisher should i pick should i pick them basis pricing should i pick them basis location and a lot of manual efforts are needed but when you talk about programmatic activation for any channel as you know platform allows you a lot of capabilities like short form videos the way we talk about video channel similarly for out of uh, home you have screen limitations right so in the channel you can select all of it together which allows you to a plan in a very effective manner b do a lot of omni channel targeting and it becomes very agile activation for you this is one of the campaign which mitsubishi had done not for india market other market but again their problem was that we were sitting on a lot of first party data and which we are activating on display and other video inventory so how doh is playing a role for us and what can we do with it and as you know especially in india market also past two years uh, we are seeing a decline in impact properties which in a way is a billboard so clients are not buying billboards anymore or maybe i'll say inventory partners are also not building a lot on uh, a lot on uh, billboard for their own monetization they're moving more towards inventory audience buying now that really gives a space for impact 
because we don't have a lot of impact opportunities for a client. And this also, I would say, in my opinion, uh, a misconception that uh, DOH or PDOH is a money that comes from out-of-home budget. I contest it. Sorry, but I do. I feel at a client side, still there are two teams, and that's how budgets are segregated, and they carry different expertise. One is a TV team, which is an offline budget, still we call that. Second is an online budget. Now, with an online budget, we keep on expanding and seeing what kind of uh, properties can be taken. Mm -hmm. We only had YouTube earlier within video. Now, we have OTT also. E-commerce is, again, a buzzing space. And, of course, online budgets are increasing. But also, when it comes to impact, there is not a lot. And I feel like PDOH really can fill that gap in. Because PDOH is not those big, sc uh, big screens, holdings on the highway. These are smaller screens at the airports, at the banks, at the metro stations, which are very much real time, which are helping target our audiences in a very immediate manner. If you all have seen, like I was recently, you know, talking about some membership, and I could actually see that ad coming up. So even I believe that even today, no matter how much ban is that, but basis your voice recognition, yes, ads are being shown to you. So similarly, if you're searching something on your phone, how is it not possible that connections up, you know, passing by via DSP? It is very much possible. So you can use that. So I feel that it's very under-indexed, underutilized uh, area, where when it comes to out of home, those teams hardly invest money on small screens. But when it comes to digital, those screens are big screens. They're impactful screens. But it's just that I hardly see anybody going and pitching that money from a digital team. Still, that money is tried to being pitched to an out of home team for whom the relevance is maybe very small. So, in my opinion, I really see PDOH sitting out of digital monies, which is where Mitsubishi had done this campaign. They wanted to utilize the first party data, which was being used here just to index audiences, understand their behaviors, and see what kind of sites should be activated. Once they were activated using the DSP, as I said, using only large format as a segregation. So site, areas, location was not given. What was given is XYZ size is what we require to target our ads. Basis that campaign was done and using measurement, we had seen then later how many people who got exposed to this ad later also went to the store, physical store. So it became an online targeting to an offline measurement uh, campaign. Very clearly an omni-channel campaign went for an award as well. That's one of the capability. And of course, that resulted in an uplift of your brand recall and the store uh, visit as well. So this slide talks about the very much future of P2H also, which is marketing science. In my word, I call it AI. As we know, uh, artificial intelligence four years ago was just a word being talked about where AI is equal to robot, is what we used to call. That, you know, there, there's going to be a robotic world. Will they replace humans? How will that play a role in media? Now, today, that's a reality. And since I am a country head for the biggest and the largest programmatic uh, LC unit in India, which is Axis, so we do a lot of artificial intelligence backed data optimization, activation, automation. And how that does that play a role for you here is that we humans, we require sleep, we need break, I'm here, not at work, right? But AI does not do that. And when we talk about campaigns, if I see an ad right now, all of you, there are so many components behind that. Ad is shown to a male in a particular geography, in a particular phone, when you were on a particular website, searching for a particular content. So even for one impression, I just counted seven, eight uh, different mediums. So for every impression that, that comes your way, there's so many data strings attached, which is impossible for a human eye to really catch, calculate, or even optimize on, which is where AI plays a role for you. It optimizes the campaign for you. It builds on definitely di different algorithms for you where we build different models that uh, this is my campaign goal and at the end what I really want is XYZ reach. So what kind of channels do I pick? Which is what we are building as planning tools, internal agency planning tools. So it, it formulates a media plan that 10% money should go on, say video, this property should be taking, take XYZ inventory size in terms of the creative formats, etc. Which is where AI plays a role, so we don't call it an artificial intelligence-led campaign, but an amplified intelligence, where a human plus AI brings better efficiency, which is where we see uh, definitely DOH going forward, because as I told you, that DOH sits on a lot of data, which is a location-based data, the future of it, it's what we really want to go for. And when we talk about campaigns, performance, 
is coming you know alongside so you cannot say that it's a branding campaign is impactful campaign every campaign has to have an roi so when we talk about that we need to understand that uh, out of form clearly is an offline world and doh is making it turn towards an online but instead of moving from offline to online it can also act as a bridge between both not moving from one to another but being a connector for both which means that you can drive better efficiency you can provide better omni channel led campaigns i'm not saying move out of our monies to poh or doh but what you can do is have a campaign where programmatic digital out of home campaign can build a incremental tool for you which can be a connector for you that okay we have done a we have taken xyz out of home screens now can we index those audiences so let's go on to that also i will uh, just uh, spend only 5 seconds on this slide uh how marketing science is basically a kind of you know helping advertisers run their campaigns as we all know even as audiences we are always on google searching so many keywords we are on social at least me always on instagram right so there's a lot of data that we are leaving for us in terms of our search queries in terms of our social browsing pattern so even for out of home all those queries all that data is definitely a great converter for you to understand your audiences retarget them understand in a way how a search query where you understand a particular audience is maybe interesting to food so near food hubs or food courts can you convert that to a big screen creating an impact for an advertiser which is where marketing science plays a role for you where you write all those models and algorithms now why i want to talk about journeys to you i just you know mentioned this that uh, out of home screens when you're taking it really matters what kind of audiences are they So it's a tool built at Group M called Journeys, used for all three mediums: out of home, DOH, and then PDOH. So for out of home, Journeys is a tool which helps you. So we have mapped all the sites in India uh, on out of home. I'll say majority of them, where it also combines back to the fact that what are the interests and affinities of audiences. For an example, in the platform, you'll choose that. Uh, so I'm from Delhi. I'll take name from Delhi. That South Delhi as a region, and what all screens are there. and i really want to go only for audiences who are interested into food now basis people available in those locations the high indexing audience for food it will show that within south delhi say um, you know aims as an area is the one where you can see more foodie audiences so you can pick your website now sorry pick your offline sites basis that indexing score which is where journeys is helping you another campaign was being built and pitched on same where a client it was a, a moto client they wanted to understand they said a lot of people come to my store i want to understand where do they go back so they come to the store they do the test drive of the bike but i want to understand where do they go back where do they reside my store is in malwa nagar but they, within the radius of 5 km there are so many small pockets so when i'm putting my out of home because i'm putting a, a offer on exchange so i only want to select those out of home sites where these audiences are residing and sitting what we did we captured audiences coming in those in on that store particular store for at least a month then we index them once we index them using a partner called live site we could understand uh, locations where they're coming going back every day in the evening so clearly they are their house pockets with which we could understand that 70% of audiences are residing in these certain pockets and let, let's pick up the screens which are in those pockets to drive more conversion and more recall for the brand which is where such tools are helping you to better plan a campaign because of course you can't buy all the sites but out of all available sites which sites are you buying which is a out of home campaign but becomes effective for you because it's backed by data right similarly when you're activating a doh campaign you can use same data to activate it when you move towards programmatic you can take it further more a step ahead in terms of activating across channels sorry yeah so as we know uh, the analytics suite the way we call about that offline media exposure i just talked about interesting here is outcome tracking so mostly traditional clients when i'm talking to them the concern i always heard is yes i spent my money what is the output what is the outcome what am i getting if i put money on a certain planning tool uh, that's a cost to me how am i benefiting it but if you do a programmatic campaign alongside not taking all the money but maybe 10% of it you can prove the efficiency you can say that people who got exposed to my out of home screens can i now retarget them through smaller screens which is maybe at the railway stations 
airports, depending on the audience and the campaign. And I further retarget them using display a digital campaign and take them towards a landing page or take them towards the offline store that you want to have and give you a proper proof of pudding in terms of what impact did this campaign lead to you. And you can also do some brand lift surveys also alongside if you want to do. Again, another uh, just a case study for online bank on a similar methodology that I'm just talking about, which is how do you drive a quality in-store and an online customer visit using same methods that I'm just talking about. I'll skip this in interest of time. Just lastly, uh, last slides I'm going on. So as we say, connecting off online and offline campaign, and my purpose today to come on the stage for this closing note is only for this, that when we talk about PDOH, clients are really confused, and it's not their fault because that's how market is evolving. If we, if we, if we talk about 10 years down the line, uh, clearly, definitely, PDOH will be the basic norm. But if we talk about 10 years before, how it was, I'm sure even to sell a YouTube or a OTT for any digital market here, it was a great challenge. Like, client would say, why will I buy this? I have my GRPs coming in. I have my TV coming in. And now, it's so surprisingly, I mean, it's great that 40% of the monies are going towards programmatic. Of course, it is adding a lot of value. That is why monies are going there and being plowed there, right? So similarly, I feel it's a great time, especially post-pandemic, because that pushed a lot of us towards our behavior and activities towards digital world. And when you talk about digital world, if that is very much accountable and measurable, Similarly, out of home as a channel is going towards the same line. So I, I feel that I would urge you, all of you, that when you're speaking to your clients or when you're planning your own strategies, it's very important that you start flowing it together in both your offline budgets and your online budgets. Out of home definitely should sit within the offline budget, but within online, at least 10% of the budget should be used to experiment your programmatic DOH marrying together with your out-of-home strategy. And that is when you see wonders coming in, the way you do with your traditional TV buying and you have your YouTube or a video online advertising playing a role together with each other in a way Jugal Bandi is what we call. So clearly two words is what you can pick is your digital insights and your DOH insights. You can club them together and then you can have a curated combination of your campaign which is driving a bigger impact. Just an example of DOH with other channel that you can do. Customer retargeting, as I told you, just an example that uh, when you're doing an out-of-home campaign, why don't you club this together with DOH, collect audiences, retarget them using display, take them towards the offline store, take them towards the online store, which is where you talk about how do you amplify them across digital. And uh, why is it omni-channel? Because you can club this together with your search and social signals. So for your client, out of home does not stand alone as a siloed approach, but very much an integrated approach, which is why going programmatic is important. And as uh, you already know that uh, this is the, with the last slide, the, the numbers that you see at the bottom are basis, some campaigns that has been done just to identify what kind of lift can we expect. So since you could do a cross-channel targeting, so there's a difference in omni-channel and a cross-channel. Omni-channel is when you're buying your display, OTTs, video, PDOS together. It's like one omni-environment. Cross-channel is when you're taking uh, insights from another channel, like a search, like a social. We're able to understand that who are these people searching for certain keywords for this brand or their browsing activity on social and take them back on your current campaign, which could be your PDOS. That is cross-channel. So when you use uh, audiences using a cross-channel targeting, that drives more efficiency because the insights are stronger. Omni-channel targeting is more to do uh, in order to avoid duplication of each. Somebody who has been exposed to a digital campaign, suppose display, should not be exposed more on programmatic DOH. That becomes omni-channel capping of audiences. But when you, when you want to use uh, insights from a different channel like a search and social, use them on your current channel selection, which in this case is programmatic DOH, becomes a cross-targeting channel. So it is very effectively seen that when we did all of this, when we moved beyond a basic uh, standard creative uh, capabilities to a very much integrated and immersive creative capabilities, we could see that DOH club with mobile gave 69% higher store visits, which was different because when you talk about DOH, it is moving just from impact. So that's where you're saying that uh, a lot of ROI is being driven. When you married DOH with TV, 55% higher brand lift was seen. 
Because TV, as you know, is known to have and give you a wider reach. But when you club that with a DOH, you can actually now make it more accountable, make it more measurable. And lastly, again, when you did that with social, again, we could notice 50% higher ad recall. So that's, that's about it, guys. I hope uh, it was insightful for you. And if you have any questions, I'm all happy to answer. All right, yeah.